Hey, hello, and welcome to the show. It's me, John Park, and this is John Park's Workshop. Uh, we've done it again, and like I said, this is going to be the best John Park's Workshop all day today, and all week, because this is the only one. Uh, and I am uh, excited about our project that we're going to look at today. Uh, we'll talk about a couple little Adafruit housekeeping kinds of things. Uh, I've got a Make Code Minute for you and a Make Code Arcade Game Pick of the Week to show you. Uh, and I might even do a little uh, gear report. And uh, I also have a Product Pick of the Week recap to do. So that's what we're going to be up to. How about that? Uh, I've also been doing a little bit of uh, work to try to improve my streaming situation, uh, streaming settings and bit rates and so on. Uh, so that's good. Uh, it's weirdly hot in Southern California today, so I'm hoping that my camera doesn't overheat. I can't believe uh, we're turning that corner or already. What are what are we in like the middle of January? Just barely. Oh boy. Um, so I may have to turn on the fan or the AC, believe it or not. Good grief. All right. Uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So uh, first thing I'll mention, and I like to mention this every week, is that if you are looking to hire someone or you're looking for work, check out the Adafruit job board. It's at jobs.adafruit.com. And let's see, I may have broken... Yeah, I've broken the universe, so let me fix that real quick. This is going to just take a moment, hopefully, to uh, get you that screen that I want to show you. This is the inner workings of Wirecast. Let's see. Hey, it fixed it. All right. Uh, so you can see there, that is the jobs.adafruit.com board. That's what it looks like. And uh, this is the help wanted section. And you'll look here, we've got a position that's opened very recently, just a couple days ago, for an executive director open source initiative, which is a remote position. There's also this director of resource development for Python Software Foundation. It was posted uh, about a month ago. And also this community game designer position for Hack Club. So those are just some of the cool things that you'll see if you head on over to jobs.adafruit.com. They're right there. Uh, and as if on cue, my main camera over here did overheat itself. So I'm going to flip it back on while I'm hiding behind that help wanted sign so you don't see this. And uh, let's see if I can get this. Yeah, there we go. All right. That should work. And I'm going to turn on my air. So might be a little background hum for you there. Hopefully it's not too bad. I think it's worse in my ears than it is on the mic. Uh, all right. So... That is jobs.adafruit.com. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to uh, talk about is my product pick of the week that I had this past week. Uh, I do one of these every week. It's on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. Uh, hi, Adam. I'm saying hi to people over in Discord, by the way, if you're wondering who I'm talking to and, and looking at. And in fact, I can flip over also to check out the uh, YouTube. Hey, Hugo. Hey, Adam there also as well. Nice to see you all. Uh, and I should keep an eye on that because that tells me a little bit about my stream health. Uh, and uh, let me know if you see the audio go out of sync because I've got uh, yet another trick I'm going to try. I'm, I'm seeing a few dropped frames, but nothing terrible. Um, so for the product pick of the week, uh, what I do is every Tuesday I have a new or new-ish Adafruit product that I like to show off and uh, give you a little backgrounder on and talk about some of its features. It's about 15 minute long show. Uh, one of the cool things about the show is that you get to get a discount on the product during the show only. So we had a 50% off on this one, which is this MCP 2221A. Uh, and here's a little recap. Product pick of the week this week, it's this MCP2221A, and it allows us to plug in USB to the computer on one end, and then an I2C device or other GPIO types of devices, inputs, outputs. Take any of your Stemma QT I2C devices that you may have on little breakouts, plug them in, and just start using them right on your computer right inside of Python. I've got a nice little OLED display here. I'm going to take 
info from my computer, my IP address, CPU load, disk usage and percentage, and battery. I'm telling Python 3 to run that code. Now, there is no microcontroller involved. This is just direct. It's the MCP2221A. It's a USB to I squared C breakout board. Yeah, and I will also just hold it up right here because I wanted to show you the cool little uh, mount that I had made for it. This is a, a recycle of a previous project mount, but I've got that little OLED on top there. Um, and uh, it's interesting because, you know, typically we'll use microcontrollers uh, for a lot of projects, even ones that are they're talking back and forth with the computer. In fact, my project today does that. But if you're a real Python whiz, you may be interested in using your computer uh, with that uh, MCP2221. A exclusively. Uh, who knows? More fun stuff to play with. Uh, Hugo over in Discord says that, uh, darn you, John Park, your product pick made me put, up, put in an order on Tuesday. Well, that's good. Uh, the, the orders keep us moving. That's, that's how Adafruit runs. We, uh, we sell stuff, we put out tutorials, you buy stuff, and uh, we keep doing it. So thank you. Um, all right, let's see. What's next? Uh, how about a little Make Code Minute? Let me flip some camera thingies around a little bit uh, like that. That'll do it. Uh, so for the Make Code Minute today, I wanted to prototype a sort of game that you could do on a Circuit Playground Express uh, that's similar to a Minesweeper type of game. It's Find the Hidden Object. And so what you'll see here is I have my Circuit Playground Express, and each time I press the A button, I move that little yellow dot around the circle. When I want to guess if that's the location of the hidden dot, I'll press the B button. Uh, in that case, it showed red, means that's not where it is. And as I move, it's going to cover up that, that knowledge that we have. So you've got to remember it. It's like a matching game. Uh, so I'm going to go through here until we, we actually get it. Uh, and you'll see, I don't have a, a fully developed game here yet. Um, but I think that one I, I skipped. But this is sort of the bones of, there we go. You'll see there, it turned green, it ends the game. Uh, so I'm not doing any scorekeeping right now of how many red tries you get. Uh, I am also thinking of doing something that will indicate maybe which direction the thing is as you sort of hone in on it. Uh, but I want to show you how, do you how do you set up something like this. So here inside of Make Code, you can see it's actually a fairly... Uh, simple bit of code. There's not too much going on. The first thing that happens is on start, I call this function that's called reset game. I also do that if I press A and B buttons together. Uh, that's how we'll reset the game. When we reset the game, what we do is we set a variable for something called the hidden location. That's the hidden dot. Uh, and that's going to be somewhere between 0 and 9, which is the 10 LED positions on the Circle Playground Express. Then we also set a variable for our current position, which is used to keep track of where we are on that ring play a little startup sound, uh, and we blink the LEDs, and then we set the current location's color to yellow. So everything is set to blue except for that current location. And we have a variable called uh, game on. We set that state to true so that we can't keep playing after the game is over. Then on button A click, we're going to, if the game on is flipped to true, we're going to set the current pixel color to blue. It kind of erases the yellow. Move forward one and then set that pixel to yellow. We also use a little uh, remainder divide by sort of modulo thing to loop all the way around these pixels every time from zero to nine to zero. Uh, then when we think we're ready to guess, you press B if the game on is set true. Then we set that current pixel to orange, which says, okay, we're checking this pixel. We wait a little bit for some drama. Uh, and then we do some comparisons. If the current location variable is the same as that hidden location, let's say they were both set to two, then we're going to play that green pixel, sound the alarm, pause for a second, play a little animation, uh, set all the pixels to green, and then the game is over, so we, play the, we, we flip the bit to false. If not, we set it to red and then keep moving forward. We play pew pew and then you keep going. Uh, so that is how you can create the uh, foundation of a little guessing game 
inside of make code on the circuit playground express and that is your make code minute Thank you. It's a good thing that I ramble for a little bit afterwards so that someone can remind me that I'm muted. Uh, Adam says, you sunk my battleship. Oh, yeah, it's kind of like a, you could definitely, do, you could do networked games. That would be kind of interesting, right, to, to be able to place guesses uh, where, you, where you lay them down. Uh, you can do network games with wires, or you can do it even with infrared if you, if you have line of sight uh, between two devices. So that's a, that's a neat idea. I'd love to see if someone comes up with uh, a more fully fleshed uh, out game using those ideas on the Circuit Playground Express and Make Code. Uh, all right, let's see. What have we got next? Uh, how about, speaking of games, we do a Make Code Arcade Game Pick of the Week. And my Arcade Game Pick of the Week this week is Get the Levers. This is by FD268 over on the Make Code Forum, which is forum.makecode.com. Here is the game. I'm going to probably need to reload this so that it remembers uh, what's what. Uh, Mr. Certainly says I have a flickering light in the corner. Yeah, I think that's the uh, fan blowing on my spotlight diffuser there. Sorry about that. Uh, all right, so this is the game. Get the levers. Now, again, this is sort of a um, almost like the foundation of a game. It's, it's certainly got a mechanism you might want to use in a game. Uh, that does other things, but even on its own, it's pretty cool. So what happens is we have a little character that can move around the screen, and we have these levers. So the idea is you got to flip all the levers. So you got to kind of get lined up perfectly there, which is a little hard on my keyboard. It might be easier on a game machine. And you'll see there I flipped the two levers on this level, and these stairs open up, or this gate opens up. I'm not sure which it is, which means I can move into the next level. So now you're going to go around finding these levers. And uh, there are a number of these tile maps for the different levels, uh, which we can see if we go into edit code and take a look at that. But you get the gist of the game. We just got to find all of these levers. And I think I already flipped that one. Uh, and flip them all. Am I missing one? Or I may have already opened the door. Let's see. That's, I think, down here somewhere. Oh, there's, I bet that's the last one. Yeah, okay, this has actually teleported us to the next level. So if I hit edit code here, it'll take us over to the uh, blocks view inside of make code arcade. So I'm gonna close the simulator there. And here you can see, this is the uh, initial tile map, which has walls turned on for some of these areas you can't walk through. Uh, and there are a bunch of different tile maps for all the levels, as well as the logic for deciding when to change the tiles to show you you can move on to the next level, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's my game pick of the week. Go check it out. It's called Get the Levers. It's by FD268. Really nice job. All right. So let's see. How's our stream health? Oh, uh, someone asked over in the chat about the... Um, the chat being out of sync with what's going on in YouTube. Yeah, YouTube has a certain amount of latency uh, from when I do something and it actually broadcasts it. That latency is less on Twitch. So if you're watching on Twitch, you'll see it closer to real time. If you didn't know about that, that hopefully explains why sometimes you see people reacting to things before you see them. Uh, it's it's a, a lag there. And then there can be buffering on, on, um, on your end as well with your service provider. So... Um, Welcome to internet. It's, uh, it's buffery. It buffers. Uh, all right, let's see. What have we got next? Um, check my notes. I think uh, what I want to mention real quick, actually, is a... Um, so, so before we get into the project, and we'll spend the rest of our time on the project this week, um, 
I wanted to do a little bit of a gear report. And so this is uh, different from my JP's product pick of the week. This does not happen to be an Adafruit thing. This is something that uh, I actually got for Christmas. My wife gave me this uh, and I'm very excited about it. It's a bullet pencil. I've never carried a pencil around in my pocket because you know, you break it or it's real long even if you put a, a tip thing on it. So what this is is uh, a pencil that looks like the cartridge of a uh, a rifle cartridge, like a 30 caliber th or 30-30 type of uh, cartridge. And inside it has a very tiny pencil. It's actually a number two pencil size. Uh, it's just real short. And uh, it press fits into this little joining ferrule type of thing, which allows you to make it full normal writing length. So it's super tiny, but you're not writing all cramped with a tiny, tiny pencil. You actually get to flip it around and use it like this. Uh, and put it back in for protecting it. You can refill it uh, if you run out with official refills or pretty much any pencil that you chop down to size will fit in there. Uh, and one thing I really like about this is it also has a uh, clip for your pocket and you can also replace erasers if you run through your erasers real fast. Um, and one uh, really interesting thing about this is there's a whole history behind bullet pencils that's very interesting. Uh, I won't go into it now, but go look it up. These. Uh, these were pretty much a, um, uh, a creation during World War I. Uh, soldiers used these and then they became a commercialized product and eventually a sort of novelty giveaway product. Uh, and uh, I'll actually, I'll, I'll plug this. I just did a, a podcast for Kevin Kelly's Cool Tools and it's not out yet. Uh, we just recorded it, but in it I talk about the, uh, the bullet pencil. Um, this one I got from uh, I think you can get them at the Gentleman Stationer or Gentleman Stationery, something like that. Um, they're not in, this one's not in stock a lot of places, but even better maybe, uh, go to Etsy or eBay and get a used one, uh, especially ones that are brass and wrapped with advertising logos. They're very cool. Um, so that's my, my little gear report is the bullet pencil. Um, and Adam asks, what do you do when you put that pencil down and seconds later it's vanished? I don't. I have it here in my pocket. I'll jump so you can see. No, oh, you can't see that. I'll tilt this down. I'm gonna break everything just to, in the name of science. It's right there, it just lives right there, always. There's, I never put it down, I use it, I put it in the pocket. Uh, so that's, that's my, my tip for you, otherwise yes, you will lose your pencil. Um, also that clip keeps it from rolling away off the desk if you did set it down, but don't set it down, bad idea. All right, uh, let's see. Next up, okay, so let's get into uh, our product or our project of the week, shall we? Look, project build, that means it's time. Um, so luckily with my uh, air running, the camera is happy and it's not shutting down. So I'm gonna move over to the workbench and uh, show you what we've got going on and, and uh, build a little project around it together. So let's, uh, let's head on over here, okay. So, first thing you'll probably notice is when I come over here, I'm creating uh, changes in this visualization that's displaying here because it's uh, microphone reactive. So this is a, and I'll, I'll go back to the computer and show you the link for it, but this is a uh, visualizer. It's meant to be a music visualizer. Uh, written in processing that's called Animus, A-N-I-M-U-S. Um, and actually what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna turn down the mic sensitivity uh, and that way it, oh boy, it still, still is anyway. Uh, I'm reluctant to turn off the mic because that could cause problems while it's running. Uh, but that's not as bad, you're not seeing as, as much stuff there. Uh, and the reason is what I wanna show you is how you can create some touch controls for this visualizer, and obviously this, or hopefully it's obvious, this would apply to pretty much any sort of uh, VJ software, visualization software, uh, movie looper. Uh, so the idea was to do sort of a video art installation type of piece where you might want to press uh, something to change behaviors. Uh, so what you'll see is if I uh, press my little piece of uh, cardboard and copper tape here, I've just changed which visualizer we're looking at. Um, if you were doing this in sort of a, let me let the, the cursor disappear in, the, in a second there. Uh, if you were doing this sort of in a kiosk mode type of thing, I've got it on this playing on the separate monitor. Um, 
then it's nice to have no visual controls and nothing clunky like a keyboard, you know, a typing keyboard sitting there, uh, but instead have something that is touch reactive. So if we use um, either uh, copper tape, some sort of capacitance reactive objects, uh, you could use anything that you use for like makey makey type projects. So fruit, you could of course have bananas, which is really a popular thing for this type of thing. Um, but what you'll see is if I, if I drop down uh, to my other uh, camera display here, and in fact, I'm gonna turn one more light on so you can see that a little better, a little brighter. Um, turn on that light. Yeah, maybe that helped. Um, what I have here are a series of 12 capacitive touch pads that are on a little breakout board, and I'm running them right now on a Metro uh, ESP32 S2. Um, I'm actually thinking I'll switch this over to a Cutie Pie uh, because it should work, it should run. It's in CircuitPython, but there's only two libraries that I'm using, really. There's the uh, library for the uh, capacitive touch board, and there's the HID library that allows this to act like a keyboard. Um, and so right now what I'd like to do is, I'll, let me show you what some of these controls do and then um, we'll set them up to work with these uh, alligator clips. So you'll see here, uh, there are, uh, I've, I've displayed it, you might not be able to read it too well, but I've displayed this heads up display. Uh, and it shows you what I've been doing here, each time I press the right arrow key on the keyboard, I switch between the available visualizers. There are three of them here. Uh, if I go back, back arrow, it goes to the previous visualizer. Uh, then we have some really interesting controls for what a visualization looks like. Uh, let's switch to this one. Uh, so for example, you can change the camera. Uh, this is in essence a three-dimensional scene going on in processing. So if I hit W, A, S, or D, I'll change the positioning of that camera. So you can see we're now slowly transitioning to a different view of this visualization. Uh, we can dance the camera around a few different ways. Uh, and then there are some really cool um, effects that we can add. So here's one called expand. Uh, expand changes the nature of the visualization. Blur changes uh, sort of the streakiness of it. Uh, let me go to a different visualizer for a second here. Uh, so you can see if I press one, there's a thing called highlight. Uh, two is gonna give us this expand, which is sort of a catch-all for changing some sort of modulation inside the visualizer. Uh, three makes it revolve. So now we get sort of this continuous revolving, evolving thing. Uh, four turns it between particles and streaks. So this is sort of gentler looking because we don't have uh, continuous lines. We have these particles, ooh, which are looking really cool and kind of fractal. Uh, so let's change the camera on that. Uh, this will give us sort of a, a different view of the same visualization. Some of them will kind of make it look right down the barrel of the visualization. Uh, I think the up, up arrow will do that in this case. We can take um, particles off. And uh, we can also invert it. That doesn't look so good on camera. Uh, so now what I'll show you is how we, how we can set this up to work with capacitive touch here. So you'll see I've got um, my capacitive touch breakout. This will actually allow us to use 12 different capacitive touch things. Um, so if you watch the visualizer right now, I can just touch these alligator clips. So uh, this will turn on that highlighting or turn off that highlighting. Let me turn it off. This will turn off expand. This will turn off revolve. So now we're we're not revolving around the thing constantly. We're seeing it sort of emanate from one spot. Uh, then I can change that camera. Oh, let me turn revolve off again. Change that camera around. Is that it? Oh, that's particle mode. Sorry. Uh, so you can see one of the things I'm struggling with here is, okay, I've got 12 alligator clips and there's, there's only uh, a few colors to choose from. So I don't know what they all do. Um, so that's why I started setting it up like this here where we can see um, the, the art of what I've written actually with my, with my trusty bullet pencil here, uh, what they do. So if I want to, let's say, uh, what does this one do? This is, this is the camera views. So I think this one is the W or camera up. So I wanna set up a little um, control for that. So what I'll do is just take a piece of uh, copper tape 
And this could be different objects. You could use uh, maybe nails and a piece of wood for this. You could use, like I said, paint with some conductive paint. Uh, there's a, a lot of options with capacitive touch and it's quite sensitive. Uh, also, I, I believe this one uh, does calibration at startup. So I'll probably restart this after making these, um, adding, adding these copper pads. Uh, let me see, can I, I'm just gonna twist this camera a little bit. Let's see that a little better. Uh, so this is gonna be the up, and let's just set up up and down, how about, instead of up, down, left, and right. Which one is down? Oh, that was, okay. I think it's this one. Yeah. So let me set up another piece of tape for down. Uh, and I probably should get some, I, I don't have uh, long enough alligator clips to, to make, I think, good use of this space, but that's okay. So how about we set this one like so. What did we say? Was that one for down? Uh, let me re-invert that. Yeah. Sneak that under there. Uh, so this is some adhesive copper tape uh, that we actually have Adafruit store. Uh, so this will be this one here. I know the copper doesn't look, uh, you can't see it very well on the uh, cardboard here. So I'll make some boundaries around it. So that's gonna be up and that's down. So here's my crude uh, setup for changing. So there's the down camera, up camera, uh, and let's see. Yeah, that's, these are, so these are the four camera controls over here. Uh, this last one actually, yeah, I have this doing invert, and this one is the blur, okay. And then these up here were the different effects. So that one, for example, is particles. So we'll set up a little particles control there. And I'll go uh, full screen. You can also, by the way, do fancy things with your copper tape, like uh, create shapes with it. So you could you know, fold it and make something that looks like a, uh, a letter P or something like that for particles. But uh, in this case, I'll just do particle. And so when I press that one, it's gonna change into particles or back to lines. Now we can switch to visualizations and go to lines. This one's cool actually. Let me uh, see, can I go to up camera for that? And I wanna turn off expand. So expand is this one. I'll make a little piece of tape for that one. Uh, by the way, I can't see the chat too well from here, but hopefully I'm still in sync. Uh, audio wise. Let's see, was that expand? Yes. And this is working really nicely with just straight capacitance. Sometimes uh, it can be helpful to hold something grounded on the board, uh, but I haven't found it necessary in this case. So uh, your mileage can vary depending on a lot of things, um, depending on how you're powering your board with batteries versus USB. Um, this, in this case, is gonna always be over USB because we're, we're using it as a keyboard. Uh, unless you did sort of like a Bluetooth version of this sort of thing. Um, so now I can switch my, um, this expand setting by tapping that. Um, the uh, capacitance settings actually have reacted pretty well to me just adding, adding to these antennas, which is what these are effectively. But I'm gonna go ahead and reset my, uh, microcontroller, so I just hit reset on this Metro. It's restarted, and so now it should have done a fresh calibration. Um, so there's expand, there's particles. I'll do that while it's expanded and you'll be able to see it better. Particles on off. Mode. This one's very cool right here. Switch our camera around. Um, and now I, I, I told you I'd turn the mic sensitivity down. What I'll do for a second is actually, um, let me switch these cameras out for you. And so you can see a larger screen here. And I'll go ahead and turn on uh, uh, some little music here. I've got a pocket operator. So 
So you may see when I talk that it adds into it. Um, but if I pick a, pick a really clear visualization here, let's, uh, there we go. I like this one. And I know you can't hear this music too well. Oh, let me turn up the mic sensitivity. Yeah, that's a cool one. Uh, so you can see, I can just clap in here. Adds particles. Uh, let me turn off blur. Oh, there we go. That's a good view of that one. Um, so this obviously is not really a, a work of art here, but you could, um, let me stop that music. You could make something beautiful. You could make, you know, you can imagine this is sort of uh, something interactive at a, um, a dance, which we used to do back in the before times, and we may once again do. Uh, do you remember those? Um, to give people some, some interesting objects to touch or a poster that has different uh, visualizations. Um, so that is the project of the week. Uh, let me head over here to uh, the workbench. And I'll show you the uh, program we're using as well as um, the uh, code that I have running on my Metro there. Excuse me. Yeah, uh, David G said, hand clapping is a great check for audio sync. You should do that more often. Uh, indeed. Oh, look, I've got, uh, I've got too many of those. Let me turn off that one there. There we go. I don't know. I kind of liked that one there, actually. Let's turn that back on. Yeah. All right. Um, so let me jump into... Uh, here is... I'm going to grab my browser window... Uh, so this is the, uh, the site where I got this. Uh, it's called Animus. It's an interactive music visualization software. It's at animusvisualizer.webflow.io. Uh, I can put that in the chat. Um, and it's a binary, but it's uh, also if you go to the GitHub, you can get the... Um, source code for it, which is all uh, in processing. This is compiled for Mac, but I imagine, my guess is, it wouldn't be hard to make a couple changes and uh, run it, uh, either in real time or, or uh, pre-compile a binary to, uh, to run on Windows or Linux. Um, so go check that out if you're interested in Animus. Um, the, uh, one of the reasons I picked this is that I was originally thinking of building something from scratch, uh, either in Touch Designer uh, or in Unity, um, but that's a lot of work. And, uh, and I found this, and this was ready to go, and, uh, and I thought it's, you know, it's free, uh, and uh, it's built with processing, which is open source, so those are, those are good reasons, I think. Um, I kind of like having this visualizing what I'm saying back here. Let me... Yeah. Ooh, it's very Tron, isn't it? Uh, and it would be fun. I, I haven't looked that closely at the code, but it would be fun to do some things like um, some color adjustments based on keys or knobs, that sort of thing. Um, the uh, Adam says, put that small screen under a glass sphere. Oh, yeah, that, this, this, this is a really cool visualizer for all kinds of things. Um, and, you know, visualizers are a little bit novel now because we don't, uh, we don't run Win Winamp as much as we used to and, and, uh, and the other uh, MP3 players that had really cool visualizers and, and screensavers and things. So I just don't see 
cool, uh, cool visualizations that much anymore. Um, uh, David G says, maybe Video Lab that take MIDI input. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, Teenage Engineering have a Unity-based um, visualizer that I've never looked at. I'm aware of it. It was sort of um, wrapped, uh, bundled up with the OPZ um, synthesizer. But uh, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Uh, you, could, you probably could use it without an OPZ. That would be neat. Uh, and so let's take a look at the code that I've got going on here. So this is a uh, CircuitPython script. Let me see how, is that cut off? Not too bad. Um, so what's going on here is I'm importing the, uh, some libraries, including time, board for the board definition, which in this case is the um, uh, Metro ESP32-S2 that I'm using. Like I said, I'm probably going to switch this over to the uh, Cutie Pie. Uh, and uh, I'm laughing because C. Grover wrote DJ JP Viz. That is going to be my new battle VJ name. Uh, then I'm importing the Adafruit HID uh, keyboard and key code libraries. This is for using any CircuitPython device like it's a keyboard. There's also one for mouse. There's one for USB MIDI. Um, and I think, in fact, yeah, so, so I'm using, I think all of these are just straight uh, keys based on what the defaults uh, were over in the uh, Animus software. So it's, it's all 1, 2, 3, 4, um, W, A, S, D, P, B, um, left arrow, right arrow, maybe a couple of those. Um, then I'm importing the module that I'm using for the uh, capacitive touch. It's this MPR121. Incidentally, you could probably run this on a Circuit Playground Express because it has, I think, six or seven capacitive touch uh, pads available on it. Uh, so you won't get the full 12, but you could, you could do a subset. Uh, then I'm creating the I2C bus to run that uh, capacitive touch board. And you can see here, uh, this is the list of keyboard commands. So I instantiate the keyboard as USB HID devices. And then this is this little array that I built of the different keys that I want to press. So right arrow, left arrow, one, two, three, four, WASD, BI for invert, H, which hides or unhides the uh, UI. And forward slash is not documented. I just kind of came across it. And I can't remember what it does, but it seemed to, seemed to change something. Uh, I don't know if it's going to... See, yeah, I don't see, I don't see a change in here. That might have been a weird quirk. On I was, I was running this under Big Sur operating system on on my laptop, and it was doing some weird things. So maybe forward slash doesn't do anything. Um, and then this is the loop, uh, or or as Sean Hemel said yesterday, the super loop. Uh, so this is the one loop that does everything in the program, which is it scans the twelve. Um, different touch pads on the MPR-121, and it gets the value of each of those. And if one of them has a value, if it's, it's, if it's being touched, uh, I'm printing to the serial port just for um, debugging purposes that it's been touched so we know which number it is. And then this is, this is it. This is the whole thing right here. Keyboard send, key list I. So I is gonna be a value that iterates from zero to 11. And if we are pressing, let's say, the second uh, alligator clip there, it's going to be item one because it's zero indexed. So that means we're going to keyboard send something from this key list that's at uh, the item one, which is left arrow. So if I press the second thing, that's the left arrow. Uh, and then we do a little sleep to keep from spamming the outputs. I could probably reduce this some because it's probably taking a little moment to do the, uh, the send. Uh, if you uh, if you find that you have it kind of doing multiple hits bouncing on you, you could increase that number. But I, I found this worked fairly well. Um, so uh, that is it. That's all that it takes to do this. Um, it's a fun visualization, and uh, I'm kind of interested in video synthesizers and video um, uh, visualization. Uh, video glitching, that kind of stuff. I haven't done much with it, but this is a, a bit of a, a, a nice way to poke around with it. So I encourage you to check it out if that seems interesting to you. If it doesn't, that's okay. You can still uh, probably uh, 
Think about using this type of capacitive touch as an alternative input for all kinds of things. Uh, could be a um, keyboard entry device, could be a game controller, could be potentially a dance, dance revolution mat type of thing. Uh, so I encourage you to, to think about ways that you can use this type of capacitive touch in CircuitPython on a microcontroller as an input. Uh, and let's see, so I'm distracted because someone on, Adam over on Discord said, I spot a YouTube bug here. Who else can spot the bug? That's too small for me to see, so. Um, well, luckily YouTube still says we're in good health as far as uh, our uh, stream bandwidth goes, so I'm very happy about that. And uh, I think that's gonna do it for today. So I'll tell you what, we've got a, a few minutes before I have to sign off. So uh, let me know, does anyone have any questions or suggestions over in the chat, uh, either the YouTube chat or in the Discord, uh, let me know. And um, I'll let you, uh, oh, so I'm looking back. We're still good in, in good sync, right? Because I saw a, a earlier message, which is not uh, timestamped, where Hugo said there went the audio. So hopefully that uh, was in sync the whole time. Crossing my fingers. Uh, let's see. Someone said YouTube GB versus YouTube.com. What's that? Do I want to know? Uh, the stream didn't start. That's weird. Hmm. Are we uh, caught in a loop? Are we time traveling right now? It happens. All right. Uh, other questions? Let me know. Otherwise, that's going to do it for today. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm John Park. This has been John Park's workshop. And uh, I will see you next Tuesday for the next JP's product pick of the week, this madness right here. And hopefully I'll have good working uh, audio, video health on that broadcast too. Uh, and uh, also actually I want to give a, a thanks to both Seagrover and Toddbot who have been helping me since Tuesday's uh, broadcast in hunting down my uh, gremlins that are slowing, slowing things down, bandwidth issues and so forth. Um, and uh, also that we can have a better experience together. The uh, other thing will be uh, this show happening again next Thursday. Uh, and oh, one other thing I wanted to mention, that's what I was trying to, trying to recall. Uh, this little thing, this is the Ada Box, and we actually, I believe, are still accepting subscriptions for the next Ada Box. This comes out in March, sometime in March, we're not quite sure, based on delays and things that are happening with factories and, and shipping uh, with our suppliers, uh, parts in China, boards being made, those, those types of things. We can't, we can't quite nail down the exact date, but it'll be sometime, we think, roughly March uh, of 2021 this year. Uh, so if you are interested in learning about electronics and coding and physical computing and those kinds of things, uh, or if you know someone who's interested in learning those things, get them a subscription to Adabox or get yourself one. You'll get uh, a box with a bunch of great stuff in it, even some exclusives that we don't sell in the store, as well as other products that we will after, usually after the fact. Uh, loads and loads of guides and tutorials and projects to help you get started. So that's Adabox, go, uh, go sign up. We uh, make about 4,000 of these and we generally sell out uh, in advance, a good bit in advance of each Adabox. People tend to stay subscribed, so there's not that many openings uh, left. I'm not sure what the number is right now, but uh, probably, a, a, I don't know, more than 100, but uh, not, not tons and tons of openings. So if you've been thinking about getting Adabox, uh, go ahead and do it. I'll, uh, I'll tell you, it's gonna be a fun one. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna take us into new dimensions. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. So uh, that's, my, that's my pitch for Adabox. If you, uh, if you were thinking about doing it, do it. All right. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for stopping by. I'll be hanging out over in the Discord chat. If you want to go there, it's adafru.it slash Discord, and you can join in. Uh, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.